So, so for the management for this patient, we need to first thing is we need to once the BP is high more than two occasions, we need to admit this patient to the ward, and then we need to observe at least twenty four hours, and we encourage the patient to have a bed rest, and then so we ask the patient to lying in a left lateral position to improve the placenta blood flow and then we need to monitor regularly the blood pressure 8 hourly and then we need to investigate we uh, do the PA profile so we can assess whether this patient is uh, having pregnancy induced hypertension or preeclampsia and then we need to um, we need to look at the fetal well-being so we actually we assess the mother the mother as well as the fetus uh, the fetus itself so look at the fetal kick chart we look at the daily CTGs we look at the ultrasound to look for any intra uterine growth restriction because low placenta perfusion causing um, low, uh, low placenta perfusion causing the the nutrition and all that will be limited so the growth the growth of the baby will be restricted and that's why when the growth will be restricted the the production of waste also will be restricted that's why the amniotic fluid will be decreased will be low at the first place uh, so that um, so that the during ultrasound the patient may present it with uh, a discord discordant growth and also uh, low amniotic fluid so <clears throat> if the blood pressure still persists despite of all the measures taken we might need to give the patient uh, antihypertensive drugs so actually we need to um, we can we can give um, normal hyper anti hypertensive drug to the to the patient because uh, it will give a side effects to the uh, baby. So there are three groups of um, three groups of anti hypertensive that is uh, that is allowed to be given to the babies, which is uh, centrally acting agent alpha blocker or we call it metal dopa. This is the first line treatment and also the calcium channel blocker such as nifedipine and also um, alpha and beta blocker which is labetolol so propanolol, diuretics and ACE inhibitor are contraindicated are contraindicated to this patient so we need for this patient we need to aim not 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 very low the, the blood pressure we need no more we need to um, aim not less than 120 and 80 uh, just enough up to 140 to 90 because this will um, obviously impact the babies as well and compromise the utero placenta blood flow so if the, the blood pressure is very high and then we uh, give the antihypertensive drug um, so that the patient, the blood pressure will be reduced up to 140 over 90 but no lower than that <coughs> so the patient with uh, medications given uh, we might to uh, induce the patient at 38 weeks uh, if the, the patient is not on medications we can uh, 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 induce the patient at 40 weeks and if is the condition if the condition is um, not good for example the patient had very severe preeclampsia and the fetal is uh, compromised with uh, IUGR and also uh, oligohydramnios we need to terminate the the babies early than than uh, so it's supposed to be so when we when we need to when we uh, because because of uh, early termination so we need to give the patient um, uh, intramuscular dexamethasone so to promote the lung maturity okay 
So in the severe in severe preeclampsia, we may give the prophylactic magnesium sulfate to prevent the conval convulsions. <coughs> we must induce the labor because we we don't want to have we don't want to have any complications like placenta abruption and thrombocytopenia, help syndrome and and very severe is uh, this the IC which is disseminated intravascular coagulation. Okay, so <coughs> we look at the sign of symptoms of impending eclampsia. So uh, what we give to the patient, we give uh, if the patient had se very severe very severe uh, preeclampsia or the patient had eclampsia we can give a bolus dose of magnesium sulfate so uh, how to give the bolus dose of magnesium sulfate which actually we give over 5 minutes not 15 minutes sorry over 5 minutes so we took uh, about 8 uh, there are about um, 4 gram so 4 gram is equal about 8 ml Okay, so one ampule is two point four seven. So uh, we just conclude it, conclude it as a two point five, and then we take two ampule, so it's equal to five, and then we only take uh, for four meals for each uh, for each ampules. It, then uh, we uh, we sum up together. We it can be uh, eight meals. So eight meals, uh, and then you. Um, insert it to the normal uh, normal saline 12 mils and then so uh, it become 20 mils okay, and then you infuse it with a normal saline and you mix it with the normal saline so become uh, 20 mils and then you inject it to the patient for 5 minutes and then for the loading dose of the patients for the loading dose we give a uh, we give uh, eight ampules, so eight ampules is about equals to uh, 40, 40 ml of uh, 40 ml of um, magnesium sulfate, and then we mix it with a normal saline of 360. So um, in the normal saline bag, usually they had uh, 500 mils, so you need to reduce it. Uh, you can reduce it up to 400 and then you infuse uh, you inject the um, magnesium sulfate uh, into the bag and and then you, we give it to the patient in 24 hours after the feeds so there are few things that we need to monitor um, because magnesium sulfate has very low therapeutic index so we very, we must uh, monitor the the patient very closely about every 30 minutes so there are few things that we need to measure uh, uh, so we can uh, reduce uh, the ma the magnesium sulfate by giving the antidotes which is calcium gluconate so there are few measures that we need to look for example bp and pulse rate reflex uh, respiratory rate and the urine volume uh, this this thing will uh, will be measured so any uh, anything that uh, we suspicious during uh, all the all the measures so anything suspicious we need to inform the doctors okay so that's it basically that's it uh, about the pregnancy induced hypertension. So, thank you.